So I pull more of the ultramarine blue in to bring the chroma down to the orange a little more significantly. As the value drops, the planes turn under, away from the light. A little bit more of the red. Before they finally go into the orbit of the eye. Work out. And towards the shadow. So we're working from left to right and from top to bottom. A little red in there. Bring that chroma down. It's one of those principles from the local you lose chroma as you move away from the source of light and away as you move away from the line of sight that's dropping slightly as it moves away from where I can see him it helps turn that edge a little bit I'll bring that up just a little bit more a little more red in there and blocky. Get these modeling factors in. Help turn the form as it moves away from the light. As I said, the neutral, <coughs> pardon me, the neutral is available just in case I need it, but mostly reduction chroma reduction I'm going to do with the blue. I might just pull the neutral in to bring the chroma, the <coughs> ultra blue down a little bit more. Yeah, a little more red. The only drawback to putting out the uh, CAD red light as opposed to the Venetian, I got to be real careful with the CAD red light because it could take over very fast. The Venetian and white is at least a little bit closer, closer to flesh chroma. In any given area, that's going to be a little lighter. Take that up into the hair. Move right down, across, moving down the scale, pulling more of the neutral in, or I should say the blue neutralized, as it moves towards the halftone, right where the transition, in fact, while I'm there, I might actually lay that in. I think I will. Drawing by the act of drawing is relating extremes. So there's no better way after I got the light and shade locked in. It's just to take a moment and hit that half tone right before the turning into shadow so that I can meet that when I come across the form. And again, it's a little more chromatic than what's there, but that's okay. Turn right around back up into the light. Peter's got a very serious look on his face. Maybe we'll pull a little more red in there before I leave. Not shifting orange as much, it's got more red. Okay. Do you know the nice thing about having a pre-mixed palette, a prepared palette? If I have to go back in and change any particular area of the hue, it's very easy. Just grab the same value that's there. It might be the wrong hue and pump the same value of a different hue in. It's very quick. Easy to make a change. Go back in there and get a little warm up there. We can work these areas together just a bit. And there's a break, top of the brow ridge. Between the top of the brow ridge, the frontal eminence, the forehead. Okay. Since I'm there and we're short on time, I'm going to pop these lights in a little bit harder. to stand out. If not, I'm going to move on. Let's bring that a little bit more. Okay. Move 
down into the, I'm going to move actually into the cheek. I'm going to work on continuing the half tone down. Get the eyes in a little bit. I figure I get the biggest forms first that have the slower rates of curvature, least projection or less projection, and then get into the features later that have the greatest areas of projection and require really to slow down, work on that form. I don't blow the drawing. Follow right on through. So it gets a little greener. I should say more chroma reduction down by the jawline as the beard hair picks up. side plane there, up. As I said, this gives me at least something I can meet when I get there in the light, from the light. And since I'm there and I'm thinking about the areas that turn away, I think I'll hit the side plane of the nose after I get done talking about not doing the features. But it's my prerogative where I work. I usually come in with that set um, procedure, at least a logical procedure, what I think to be a logical procedure, but I reserve the right to modify or adjust depending on what I think is necessary for the piece. And I tell my students, we don't want to be formula painters, we want to use a method not be formula painters. All right, I'm going to move down into the form of the cheek. I think I'll start over here, the closest one. Got the front plane. It's lit. Down the ruddy parts of the face. Right off the side plane of the nose. up in there just a little bit. Shifts red as it moves over, right around the orbit. I think I'll pull that up in here a little bit more. Down, then we get a nice drop in value, slightly in chroma. is a surprisingly weak chroma situation, but darker. Got to get that visible form change going. We always start to lose chroma down at the muzzle. <coughs> Pardon me. Let's shift right over to the side. spot of cad red light on the other side of the nose. Again, we have that edge planes taking over and dropping a little more significantly in chroma as it turns away from the line of sight. Everything gets a little more blue, a little grayer down by the beard. The influence of the hair and the skin. The problem with painting women is not overdoing it, which I have a bad habit of doing.
using this initial lay-in, I might hug that orange just a little bit more than I will later so I can get the form resolved in a basic complexion hue. And then once that's down, and I close up the piece for this initial layer, then I quickly go back before I'm done that session and start to pump more red, more yellow, start to modify things a little bit. But at least I want to get this covered, particularly in situations where the time is very short. Chin. It's very chromatic. And I said the nice thing about having that halftone waiting for me is I pull this value right into it. It starts to turn. Hopefully, if I've done my job right, get up into that nose. I should hit the underplane of the lip first, since I'm there. A little bit of the red. Just about ready for another break. I think we might just have a few minutes after that. Break. All right. Let me take about two, three minutes, Peter, and then we'll finish out with one more pose. Thank you.